The topic for today is exploring advanced data integrations with Speckle. And uh, my name is Katerina. I'm a GI software engineer at Speckle. And um, just to give you a brief introduction of what is Speckle, it's very hard to explain in one sentence, but the easiest way is to say that it's a data hub for AC, architecture, engineering, construction. And I put a star in there because it's been expanding a lot and has expanded in other fields uh, of 3D data and geospatial. And we have a very big mission to make AC and other fields better, and I will try to explain in which way. So what Speckle does in um, very general terms, uh, it uh, has connectors or plugins to different types of software for, again, architects, engineers, uh, GIS users that converts their data and sends them to the cloud storage uh, in a very simplified format uh, that reminds GeoJSON that is an open format. Uh, you can uh, open this data, you can run analysis on it or do anything with it. And it doesn't matter if you are sending the building column or a GIS uh, boundary, it will still be saved in the same format. So once you publish it to Speckle, uh, you can uh, pull it back into other apps or in the same app, uh, you can query the data, run integrations and automations on it, or you can view it in the web browser and uh, collaborate with others. So what you can do with Speckle if you are a GIS user. So for GIS users, the primary uh, utility will be to align GIS and non-GIS data in terms of location, which is often the issue, uh, and also in terms of interoperability, uh, if we're talking about CAD and BIM data. Uh, and you can also collaborate in real time via interactive uh, web interface, which you can see on the right, and I will um, show it in more details later. If you are a developer, you can build custom apps to extract real data, real time data insights. You can automate workflows, you can automate your data checks, you can build your custom apps uh, built based on different pieces of Speckle infrastructure, which is a 3D viewer, SDKs, data access and authentication. Uh, if you're a manager, uh, you can have full control of the data. Uh, you can um, set up your server in any region uh, with any provider. Uh, you can set it up yourself on we can, or we can set it up for you. Uh, you can control your data access permissions. You can uh, track the changes. You can build your dashboards and you uh, gain a lot of time efficiency doing that. And if you're a company or agency, you can host the data on public Speckle server or you can implement your own Speckle server. You can set the custom data access and you can provide your data in any way compatible with uh, GIS or architectural software or web apps. Um, this uh, all functionalities uh, can be narrowed down to three uh, categories, connecting people, software and workflows, collaborating and automating your workflows. And this all comes together with underlying principle of uh, being in full control of your data and having the full data ownership uh, by yourself. So, so we'll start with the connecting part. Uh, connecting different, um, you can explore our tutorial page uh, to see the basic workflows that you can open with Speckle between a CAD and BIM and GIS, how you can transfer the data, transform the data, uh, and you can unlock many more workflows by yourself. Uh, you can move data easily from one app to another. In this case, you can see an architect and an engineer exchanging data between Rhino and Revit. When uh, architects is sending the model to Revit and the engineer is adding some custom family BIM parameters to it, and then architects send the changes. And instead of building a new model from scratch, the engineer can just apply the changes and all the properties will be already there. Um, no matter in what uh, state your model is, you can uh, always extract uh, uh, any data from it. Uh, you can have real-time insights. You can build your custom dashboards because the data is in, again, open format. Uh, or you can use uh, existing software like Power BI, which we also have a connector for. Uh, you can um, stream the different types of data exchanges, and these are just the two examples where architects send the model from Revit to Blender for visualization purposes in just one click. And the second example is where uh, the structure is sent to the engineer for analysis, then the feedback is sent back, the engineer is implementing the changes and sending it again 
and you don't need uh, to do it with handling multiple versions of different files. You can track the versioning already in uh, your speckle model. Uh, you can not only send the data as it is, you can also implement some changes. And um, for example, uh, when we moved to uh, when we expand it into the GIS field in GIS, uh, most of data is in 2D format, but it does have the 3D properties. So we also added some uh, functionality that allows you to use digital elevation model to build the ter terrain uh, and even to create a texture from your satellite data uh, and, uh, or, and extrude your buildings based on the high properties and place it on the terrain, which is again based uh, all on open source data and in one click you have the 3D model of your location. Uh, and you can easily integrate this data with other um, architecture and engineering apps. This is an example of Revit, and you can see that you can easily receive the data and have your building placed entirely in the city context. Then collaboration aspect. Uh, the collaboration is mainly um, done in the web interface. So one key feature of the web interface is the interactive 3D viewer, which is based on the 3JS library, uh, which has a lot of different functionality and it is growing. Uh, and the main ones are that uh, you can, let's say, leave the comment in the 3D view, the other person can respond to it. You can view the model at the same time together. You can follow the other person uh, instead of sharing the screen and so on. Um, you can federate multiple models together. So if you have uh, your again, city context and architectural model in different models, you can put them together in the viewer and you don't need to worry about combining them all, uh, like different types of data in one kind of software and sending it all together. It can be sent separately and visualized later. Uh, you can also explore your data in different ways. So these are the filtering uh, possibilities uh, the viewer can detect if your data is uh, what type of data you have if it's a continuous data or discrete data and then it will apply different types of filtering to it uh, and uh, you can also compare the versions and see the changes because once you are sending the model every part of the model uh, will have a unique id and once you modify uh, the model the unique id will change so you can see what objects are exactly still there what have been changed and what have been deleted uh, and the automation part is uh, basically the continuous integration continuous delivery principle applied to architecture um, and the key uh, here is in automating um, re repetitive routine tasks. Uh, in, the, in this case, you can set up the trigger and the trigger can be different things. For example, you send the new version of your model and you want to make sure that every time you update your model, you run the specific checks on your model and you can write a script that will be triggered by every update and do this for you. There are many different uh, opportunities here. You can use some functions that we have already developed. You can build your own functions. Uh, the one on the left is running computational fluid dynamic simulation, and the one on the right is doing more routine check that, uh, checking the compliance of the structure. And uh, the control part, again, the speckle server can be set up in any region, uh, any location with any provider. Uh, you can you can do your own decisions about it. And you have multiple SDKs in C Sharp, Python, and JavaScript, uh, where you can um, get your data, push your data, modify your data, and again, build the apps on it. And this is an example of a carbon footprint app uh, developed uh, in Arup, uh, which is visualizing the carbon footprint of every element and then giving you the summary. <clears throat> and this will be updated anytime your model is updated. Um, and this is the latest uh, integration, which I'm very excited about with PyGeo API. Uh, if you have heard about PyGeo API, it's a Python server implementation of the OGC API suite of standards. Uh, which allows you to stream your data in a web feature format or web map format uh, into a standardized OGC API format. And we have uh, built the integration with PyGeo API uh, for 
this PyGeo API server to be an interface for speckle data. So it can be provided in the web feature format. So that's any client like QGIS and ArcGIS, uh, the web libraries like Leaflet, OpenLayer, Cesium can uh, stream the same data like you would with web feature service and this is the link you can you can check it out it's in the test uh, version it's just just freshly deployed so we just looked in for feedback for now to make it better and uh, these are the four use cases that we found for this the first one is that your data can be easily geolocated uh, you can have immediate preview on the location of any CAD beam or GIS model if you are building a model in Rhino or Blender or whatever, you can immediately see it on the map. Uh, you can publish it, you can send the link and everyone will receive your ready map with no effort, basically just one URL. You can build interactive maps if you have collected any field data in QJS and added it to the properties like some comments or photos or anything. You can see that all on this new map and you can share it easily with the one URL. Uh, and the Easter egg here, if you do not have a location in your model, it will go by default into the Speckelstrasse. Uh, it's located somewhere in South Germany. Um, the second use, uh, use case is basically makes a Speckle database serve as a geo database without uh, basically changing any configuration that we already have. Um, in this way, you can have all the data you store with Speckle published on any public uh, web portal that usually have to be connected with Postgre uh, Postgres uh, database or any custom database. You can use PyGeo API and get Speckle data in actually the same format. You can embed URL from Speckle and it will work in a similar way in any web portal or you can have a real time base maps for software like AutoCAD, Civil 3D, QGIS and to work with uh, the picture services there. Uh, there are different implementations that are doing this uh, and uh, compared to the other solutions, basically combination of PyGeo API, API with Speckle is also free and open source, can be self-hosted, can be um, uh, used by PyGeo API instances we are hosting. The data is already stored in the Speckle server, again public or your own. Uh, it supports 3D shapes and it has a multi-purpose data format, so it doesn't only serve GeoJSON, it's serving the 3D data that can be either served in WFS or can be imported by Speckle plugins into any other 3D software. And um, the third use case is collaborative mapping, because Speckle data is not only the data that you create in a specialized software, uh, it's also the data that any user or user with the access can go and create a comment on your speckle model and that is also a speckle data attached to your project and you can also visualize this data by by geo api and this basically will enable um, the participatory uh, design uh, in a very very easy way where you embed your url uh, speckle url uh, into the leaflet map, let's say, and uh, every new comment will be automatically displayed there. And the last use case is basically, again, same as you can do with QGIS Speckle Connector, but with the web feature service, it's even easier if you do not need any data hierarchy that uh, connector is usually providing via layer structure. If you just need the data in there, you can use it instead of the other uh, DFX uh, importers. And um, there are several case studies that I wanted to show how the companies uh, implemented uh, in their work. So uh, the first one is the case uh, with Speckle Hackathon that we do every year and anyone can join. Uh, this was a project uh, where the participants were building the uh, op were finding the optimal path for the tunnel and uh, they were people from five countries, four disciplines and they used uh, ground investigation data, geological data, many other types of data and they used Speckle as a mediator for this data to, uh, for, to run their analysis. Um, the other one is the company that has basically hacked our 3D viewer infrastructure and allow it to not only view the data, but also it enabled the architects to send the data and engineers to change the parameters of the model. 
so everyone will have immediate access to the real-time parameters. So when engineers run the analysis, everybody knows what uh, numbers the analysis was run at. Uh, and um, the geological engineering project in New Zealand, where uh, there's a lot of uh, seismic activities, so there is a bunch of uh, loops uh, in the or cycles in the analysis where they need to be recalculated over and over. So and uh, access should be also highly uh, restricted. So they turn the uh, speckle infrastructure into kind of access control database with automated versions and tagging to facilitate the tracking of the changes. And uh, the best one is saving time, of course. Uh, that was uh, the project where the company had to monitor thousands of component parts from different suppliers, and they used a speckle dashboard to monitor the offsite construction and delivery. And they also used the um, viewer functionality to change uh, for the change tracking to easily visualize what how is the advancement of the project going. Uh, and uh, Starting with Speckle is very easy. You just create a public account with app.speckle.systems uh, and you can easily start sending your data or uh, viewing the available models. And you can download the Speckle.system um, desktop manager. Uh, and the desktop manager is needed uh, for you to, it's not absolutely needed, but it's easier for you to store your accounts in there. So every connector you install for any software can access the manager to see your available accounts. And you can also easily keep track of what connectors you already have, what versions need update and so on. Uh, and on the right side, you have documentation, the tutorials and Speckle community, which is the most important part. Uh, it's a very active uh, community forum where people raise issues, propose new features, share their uh, success and failure stories and so on. And uh, yeah, I would uh, really invite you to join this the forum. Uh, and if you follow this specific link, you will be automatically joining the GIS user group. So we can easily let's say, reach you if we have any updates on the GIS-related side of development, uh, because a lot of them are engineering and architecture-related. So in this way, we can have a easier feedback and you can have uh, easy access to reach us if anything is needed. And uh, yeah, thank you. And now we are open for a question from the audience. Thank you. Terje uh, Haga Pedersen, Kongsberg, Norway. I was wondering, where can I find information if I want to install such a speckle server on uh, my private account, so to speak? So I take it out of, uh, of uh, Microsoft Azure or Amazon or anything. Is there any information about that? Yeah, the main uh, uh, resource, I would say, is this website, speckle.systems. Uh, you can find a lot of information in the documentation, but from here you will find, uh, let's say, different bits and pieces that you need to take care of for installation, for sure. Um, yes, you can reach out also people in the community. They are very, very quick to reply. Sometimes even the participants themselves tell you how they did it before. And uh, Thank you. Yeah. I have also one question. Uh, you have sh you shown uh, some kind of uh, simulations or tests uh, in your uh, speckle environment. Uh, those tests are implemented directly in your uh, environment or those tests are performed from uh, Revit or Civil 3D or stuff like that? Yeah, is it this test? Yeah, this one. Uh, so these um, automation parts are basically the separate scripts that you can upload into part of Speckle that's called uh, Automate. Uh, and uh, it's it's an optional part. So how it works is that you have uh, a library of, uh, we call it functions. Uh, basically, it's a script that expects certain input, for example, a model from Revit or uh, QGIS or something, and it uh, produces certain output. And the output can be a 3D um, can be a 3D model, which is a colorful uh, simulation. It can be a PDF report. It can be just a log uh, saying the checks have passed or any other result that uh, that you need, basically, and uh, 
yeah, you can write your function, you can upload it to the library, and you then you can attach your model to any function that you need or to several. And uh, on any uh, change, they will be running and you will have immediate feedback, basically. Any other questions? Okay, Katarina, thank you very thank much you. for your presentation.